The answered that although it was rare to have such scrolls, the jewel masters often had them, so it was not surprising for her. Joe smugly told her it was not surprising if one had one scroll, but what if it was more than that? He informed her that his master had given him ten scrolls and he had only shown the first one. Now she was totally stunned. Joe slyly asked whether she understood his value now. Joe continued, saying he had a great chance to become an equipment scroll grandmaster in the future with his talent. He subtly threatened in the end, asking whether she wanted him to become an enemy in the future, as it would be a greater defeat for her empire. He gave her time to measure the pros and cons and come up with a reasonable choice. The dean was seen in a dilemma. However, he had completed his speech and said goodbye. Before he exited, she called for him once again. She asked whether he would give her priority to sell his future crafted equipment scrolls to her empire and academy. He subtly replied that their empires were on friendly terms, so he would indeed do it. Afterward, he was seen in the canteen having lunch with Shangguan. He didn't tell her about the matter with the dean. Later, they were required to run around the whole academy square to improve physical fitness. Suddenly, someone fell down. After inquiring, it seemed like his leg was shot by an arrow without a head. Joe suspected some noble student did the stunt. Someone entered the scene while grinning evilly. He remarked that the person was too lucky to be hit by his arrow, which angered Zhou. Minghua interjected by ordering them to go back to their places. The person who shot the arrow started to apologize for doing this, while adding that he would do it again because it was fun to target a moving person. Another told him not to do it in the presence of a teacher. All of this made Zhou angry, and he whispered something in Minghua's ear. She agreed with him while warning him not to go overboard. He shot the same arrow at full speed towards the archer. Everyone was shocked to see him hit the target. The archer was whining in pain. At that moment, they decided to beat them up because of their arrogance. Then, Joe shouted to them that if someone stepped down, they would get out of the civilian class and forget about it. Then, they beat them to a pulp. Joe added that noble students had such arrogance because of having some ability. However, he stopped them as the teachers were going to come. Then he hit one of his classmates. He asked his reason for hitting him. Joe answered that it was to give justification to the teacher in case they would be inquired about the fight. As soon as the teacher came, they started to roll on the ground and pretended to groan in pain while exclaiming that they were beaten by noble students. Meanwhile, the noble students claimed that they were the ones who were beaten. Afterwards, they were seen in the dean's office. Joe shouted to the dean that they were shot by an arrow during their training by noble students, and then they started to beat them. The civilian class was just defending themselves. The noble students thought that none of the civilian students were seriously injured. They thought that he was stupid. However, Joe started to feign crying while exclaiming that Xiao had warned them not to bully civilian students, but the noble students did not listen to him. At that point, the dean finally punished the noble students because of Joe's melodrama. However, Joe also had to pay one set of mid-level equipment scroll as a punishment fee. Then the class started to treat him like a hero. Because of the fight, the afternoon class also ended earlier, so he went with Shang Guan to buy materials for the equipment reel. While looking at the shops, Shang Guan commented that there were many shops and people there. He also agreed with her as it was more prosperous than their polygon's empire. Then finally he found the shop he was looking for. However, it was too crowded so he couldn't get into it. Then he decided to go to the next shop as it was empty to find his things. The shopkeeper was quite happy to finally get some customers. The shopkeeper clarified that his shop had some kind of real material and that his neighboring shop did not have better material than them. Joe asked if that was the case. Then the shop next door might be selling at a cheaper price than him. The shopkeeper nervously informed him that the price was the same as the shop next door. Many customers went there because the shop had been visited by some equipment scroll master who was recruiting subordinates. This caught Joe's attention. He asked with a bewildered expression whether a scroll master could recruit subordinates. The shopkeeper informed him that a mid-level scroll master could recruit subordinates and most sought after were young and promising. This also sparked Joe's interest, which made him think that he could also do it. At that, the shopkeeper asked whether he was a tool roll maker. Joe proudly informed him that he was a mid-level equipment scroll master at the age of 16, which made the shopkeeper think he must be lying. Then Joe showed his intermediate-level scroll and told him that he would be exposed if he was lying. After checking the scroll, the shopkeeper concluded that it was indeed an intermediate-level scroll. Joe asked the shopkeeper whether he would mind if he recruited subordinates there. He happily agreed, as it would help them grow and prepare chairs and tables for them. Then Joe instructed the shopkeeper to use a boosting promotion sign in order to attract everyone. After a while, there was a sign saying that the youngest equipment scroll master in the whole continent was recruiting subordinates there. Joe remarked that it wasn't promoting enough. The shopkeeper pointed out that it mentioned the whole continent. Joe changed the sign. Now it was announcing an unlimited amount of recruiting subordinates. Only jewel master two or above could apply. 
They would also get the equipment reel which would have a jewel slot by a true equipment scroll master, so they shouldn't miss this opportunity. The shopkeeper was nervous to see the bragging on the signboard. Then they went with that board which caught everyone's attention as the future Grand Master was recruiting subordinates. The shopkeeper introduced Joe as a genius who became a mid-level equipment scroll master at the age of 16. Everyone was awed by it, as he was indeed a genius to become a scroll master at such a young age. The shopkeeper also added that Joe belonged to a reputed family. Besides, he was young, so he had a boundless future ahead. One of the customers doubted that he must be lying to snatch the customers from another shop. Meanwhile, as the shopkeeper was clarifying their doubts, someone scoffed at Joe and accused him of fooling ordinary people. He was Master Yun Yun Li. The shopkeeper informed them that he was an advanced level equipment scroll master. Suddenly, he attacked the shop while threatening Joe to leave. Otherwise, it wouldn't be good for him. Joe thought that he was just an arrogant person, but he was a trash who was relying on his cultivation power. Joe taunted him by saying that if he couldn't do it, it didn't mean other people couldn't do it either. He added that he had judged other people, which showed he was not taught well. This infuriated Yun. However, Joe continued saying that if he was a true equipment scroll master, he should compete with him on this basis instead of barking like a dog. Everyone was shocked to hear his words. Yun agreed to compete with him in order to check Joe's ability. Joe confidently claimed to put his life on the stake if he failed. Then he asked what Yun would give in case of failure. Yun replied that it would be dependent on Joe. Joe haughtily said that he was already searching for subordinates. If Yun failed, he would be his subordinate for the rest of his life. At that, the shopkeeper thought that he was really finished, as Joe was arrogant enough to make an advanced level equipment scroll master become a mid level equipment scroll master subordinate. Joe arrogantly asked Yun if he wanted to back off. Yun, however, agreed to it. Everyone was glad to see something like this. Yun asked about his method of fighting a bet. He offered for cultivation as Joe's base was quite low, so he could apply it as long as it was within the scope of the equipment scroll. At that, Joe conveyed that he wasn't intending to take advantage of Yun, as he was going to decide the first two matches, and Yun could decide the last challenge. Yun agreed to this. Joe then turned to Master Chin, and asked him to prepare the items to make equipment scrolls because he was going to have a match with Yun in front of his shop. Chin happily complied because it would advertise his shop. Besides, in case of Joe's victory, he would get more benefits. Shangguan showed her concern about him competing with an advanced level equipment scroll master, he consoled her by saying that he didn't do things he didn't believe in. After a while, Joe informed them about the first challenge, which was to exchange blueprints of equipment scrolls. Then they would make 100 scrolls and compete on speed. Yun was sure to win this challenge based on speed. Afterwards, they exchanged blueprints. Joe checked and found that he had a complicated blueprint to make. Yun also admitted Joe's ability as an equipment scroll master after checking his blueprint. Chin announced the beginning of the first challenge. Joe checked out the blueprint which was the most complicated blueprint he had ever drawn. He decided to draw it slowly to avoid mistakes. On the other hand, Yun's production method was easier. He completed his first production after half an hour. Everyone was watching this match, and more people joined in after hearing about it. After five hours of the match, Joe finally made his first production. However, Yun had completed 20 sets, which worried Joe. Yun was sure that he could complete the sets within the time, but suddenly he sensed the heavenly energy of Joe and assumed there must be something wrong with him. Joe was determined to complete the sets on time and started to increase his pace during the second set, which worried Yun. He thought that Joe couldn't maintain such speed. However, he decided to focus on making his scrolls. Yun didn't know that Joe had time attribute, which helped him get 12 points of his meridian to operational mode with heavenly energy. In this way, he not only sped up his pace, but completed the set with a 100% success rate. Within a few moments, he had completed another one. Everyone was excited to see him as if he was printing other scrolls after witnessing Joe's speed. Chin commented on his marvelous speed. It was slower at the first scroll, but now he could clearly see him becoming a great equipment scroll master. After half an hour, he claimed that he had finished all of his 100 scrolls. Yun didn't believe him. He offered to check them himself. After checking his scrolls, Yun sincerely admitted that Joe's skill was mightier than his. He also apologized for ruining his billboard as he was sure that Joe would become a great equipment scroll master in the future. Everyone was astonished to see Yun apologizing to Joe, which confirmed his genius. Joe accepted his apology while adding that he didn't intend to win easily. Yun assured him that he wouldn't lose the next round. Joe determined a second match to compare the backgrounds of their masters to see which was better. Yun agreed to that happily. While observing his expression, Joe doubted that Yun might also have a legendary equipment scroll. He shook it off, concluding that the match would be a tie at best. They were announced to go to the private room for the second match. Chin was disappointed because he wanted to know about their masters, as it seemed they had strong masters. 
In a private room, Yun requested Zhou to keep the equipment scrolls a secret, which Zhou accepted. Yun revealed his Golden Light equipment scroll, which was indeed a legendary equipment scroll. At that, Yun smugly asked whether Zhou had a legendary equipment scroll or not. Zhou answered that he did, which boggled Yun. He also added that from the look of Yun's scroll, it was a part of a legendary equipment scroll, while he also had the first part. Then he told Yun to compare their numbers of sets because the quality of their scrolls was the same. Subsequently, Yun showed him nine parts of the legendary equipment scroll. Yun was confused to see the happy expression on Zhou's face instead of one of surprise. It was because Zhou had ten parts of the scroll. Yun shouted in disbelief, wondering what kind of scroll had ten parts. Zhou offered to let him see for himself. He informed him that it was made by a grand master of his sect who worked hard to create the scroll. After its completion, the grand master had passed away. In a tense expression, Yun realized that Zhou possessed a rare treasure. Zhou exclaimed that he had won the second match as well. With a dark aura, Yun pondered killing Zhou to obtain his scroll and avoid becoming his subordinate. He considered himself too important to be just a subordinate and could not bear the humiliation. In the worst case, he might have to run away and go somewhere where no one would know him, never returning to this country. On the other side, Zhou observed Yun's expression and concluded that Yun was not ready to accept his defeat. Although he needed a subordinate who could follow him, a genius like Yun was not made for it. He also noticed Yun's cultivation of four jewels equal to Ming Hua, which did not make him Zhou's opponent. Meanwhile, Yun struggled internally. On one hand, he wanted to avoid being Zhou's subordinate. On the other hand, his pride as an equipment scroll master prevented him from backing out of the bet. If he killed Zhou and ran away, he would not only hate himself, but also leave a permanent scar on his heart. Moreover, his career as a scroll master would be ruined. After much struggle, he began to cry while admitting his defeat and the penalty for losing. Zhou noticed his disheartened expression and decided to offer him some solace. He granted Yun his freedom under two conditions. First, Yun had to raise his level to be higher than Zhou's. Second, Yun needed to become a Grand Master before Zhou. Zhou explained that as he was pursuing something higher, he wanted his subordinate to do the same. With fire-filled eyes, Yun declared he would become a Grand Master before Zhou, although he did not think he could meet the first condition. At that, Zhou swore on his jewel that whenever Yun fulfilled these two conditions, he would release him. Zhou gently asked if Yun was feeling better now because he needed a stronger heart to become Zhou's subordinate. Yun happily agreed to become Zhou's subordinate and asked for his next command, calling him master. However, Zhou requested not to be called master, as he did not see Yun as his subordinate. He wanted them to become friends in the future. Yun proudly said he might pay for his own food and drinks in the future. He then offered to go to the Ruoyin Palace before Yun changed his mind. Zhou replied that they didn't need to go there. They could do it here. Yun asked if Zhou had a dark attribute for the purpose. Zhou showed him his Alexandrite cat eyes mental jewel and informed him about the second dark attribute, which was a dark mark. After witnessing it, Yun was thankful he did not attack Zhou, as he could not have won against him. Yun told him that he was ready. At that, Zhou placed his finger on Yun's forehead, and Yun began to shout. A drop of blood from Zhou's finger transferred to Yun, completing the contact. Afterwards, they went outside where everyone was waiting for them. Shangguan rushed up and asked about the result of the match. Zhou informed them that the match was a draw since Yun had won the third match. He added that he didn't want to draw too much attention. People commented on their equal strength. Jin noted that it was the best result and asked Yun if he wanted a rematch. Yun nervously replied that he had expended a lot of energy fighting Zhou and would prefer to do it another time. Zhou happily agreed. He then turned to Yun and offered to go to a nearby inn to discuss the manufacturing of equipment scrolls. But before they could go further, someone interjected, asking if he could bet both of them. He introduced himself as Lin Tian Ao, who had the attribute of an earth jewel master specializing in defense. He wanted to place a bet with them. Zhou noticed that, like Ma Kun, Lin had only a single defense attribute. Lin daringly added that the bet would have the same condition. The loser would become the winner's subordinate, which made everyone sweat. They didn't accept and were ready to leave, thinking Lin was a madman and a bully. Lin protested that he wouldn't attack them. As long as they made him move a step, they would win. Zhou was not convinced, noting that it was no different from him defending and not fighting back. Lin insisted that his offer was generous. Besides, he wouldn't fight no matter what method they would use. However, Zhou was reluctant to accept. Suddenly, he heard Chinner's voice telling him to accept the offer as she would help him. Zhou recognized the girl immediately as she was the one who had saved him that night. He also remembered that even Ming Hua was afraid of her. The girl introduced herself as Tian Er and suggested he fight Lin, as Lin could be a great asset for him in the future. Then he turned to Lin and asked if that was all he wanted to bet on. Yun was annoyed by Zhou's willingness to bet with Lin. 
Joe commented that betting with words alone was not enough for him. Lin asked about his method of betting. Joe told Lin that both he and Yun would fight him at the same time because they were tired from their previous fight. Additionally, Lin would tie one of his hands in defense with only one hand. Lin was reluctant to accept the bet at first, but eventually agreed. Everyone was shocked to see him agree to such conditions. Joe was ready for the match, but Lin told them to follow him to an underground arena. Joe was hesitant, unsure if Tianer would be able to help him there. Lin added that he wouldn't be able to escape if he lost. Everyone remarked that the underground arena was a preferable place. Yun commented on Zhou's worry and consoled him by saying that he would help him there. Shangguan also told him to be careful. Only three of them could enter the underground arena. Once inside, Lin told them his condition. If either of them could move him half an inch within the time it took for an incense stick to burn, they would win. He added that he would only use one hand. Yun decided to attack first but was nervous about the strength of Lin's defense. He observed that Lin was not even using his full power. To gauge Lin's strength, Yun decided to use all of his power in his attack. However, during the attacks, Lin's shield had been upgraded. Zhou observed that usually an equipment scroll had a slot for the jewel used for either offense or defense. In Lin's case, his shield was fused with his jewels. Additionally, Lin's equipment scroll was of a full defense type. Lin used two more jewels, resulting in his shield being fused with three jewels. So Yun decided to attack Lin's feet to misbalance him. As soon as he got closer to Lin, the shield extended its size to cover Lin, causing Yun to fall down from its force. Yun observed that the shield was now fused with four jewels, making it powerful enough that Lin didn't need to move a muscle. Yun had used half of his energy, but was unable to make Lin move even a little. Meanwhile, Zhou extended his hand to touch Lin's shield and complimented its excellence. He asked if it was made by Lin's equipment scroll master, adding that this was likely why Lin was so confident about the match. Lin asked them to attack together in order to defeat him. Zhou commented that he needed to check his strength before that. When Lin observed Zhou's strength, he was shocked to see Zhou had only three jewels. Zhou remarked that he couldn't beat him with strength alone. When Zhou tried to attack the shield, it grew larger, eventually fusing with five jewels. 